Yorana, and welcome back to FM Tahiti. It's time to start the season. Third season, and the off-season went really quick, uh, partly because nobody wants to join us. We can attract players, just not good players. Um, I'll take you through a bit of the transfer stuff, but basically, we tried really hard. Nobody wanted to come to us. You can see here we've got a a pending transfer, which I'll explain a little bit more about uh, in a second. But it was quiet. Um, our reputation improved over the off season, uh, but we're not the the highest rep team. That's uh, the Huheen Islanders, the Eels, because they won the RCL. Moria's rankings uh, dropped a little bit as the former champions. Bora Bora's went up a little bit of moving around, but nothing too drastic there or unexpected. There were a lot of um, manager changes as well. So the Huheen Eels manager, uh, Augier, I believe it is, uh, Gwendal Augier or something like that, um, he left the Eels, so he won the OCL with them, and left because they couldn't agree a contract, and then went to Bora Bora, whose manager had also left. So there was a lot of movement. So now Bora Bora are the reigning champions, and they're managed by the first Tahitian manager to win the OCL in our database anyway. So they could be quite a, a force to be reckoned with. Uh, but I'll show you the, uh, the transfers. We tried so hard. It was So basically this is it. Nice and easy. Joe Jansen has gone to Mount T. They came in for him and I had a look at him and I had a look at his... Oh, that, the colour clash is horrible on that one. On the nonnies. The nonnies is the... Nonnies are the name for the fruit that they uh, harvest there, the cheese fruit, and it's yeah, it's a weird name, just like it's a weird colour scheme. So he's played a couple of seasons for us, he's got almost 40 league games, never mind the cup ones, but his rating's never been amazing. He's never been particularly solid. I mean, well, he's, he's been uneventful, I guess is one way you'd uh, describe him. So we got rid of him, because we've got Lamb, who's better, and we've got a youth... Uh, left back who looks like he might be more promising. Uh, we managed to get in Mohamed uh, Makasina from the Feral Cats who've been relegated. He's kind of highly rated in that they already reckon he's better than the rest of my other defenders and he's got some good general all-round attributes with heading, marking, tackling, not too bad. Some good all-round mental attributes even if some of the ones for the central defenders not exactly great but if you Take him onto no nonsense, what it'll be, it gets better. But I got him mainly because he can also play in that defensive midfield position as well, so he can cover Weaver, so Weaver's not the only one who can play in there. And I did try and get another ball winning midfield to go in there, but there was, there was nothing doing really. No one would come, or they wanted insane amounts of promises to be made, and I just couldn't do it. I did have a, a attacking midfielder on the right to come in as maybe a potential wide target man but they wanted something like 400 pounds per week and i think currently the most i'm paying is about 250 and that's for gerard who's scored 33 goals i wasn't going to do that for a kind of unknown now this guy here ronald Haas, is a marquesan player who's playing for uh panola quadin or quadin um which is a new caledonian team so mark uh, Marquesa or the Marquesa Islands replaced New Caledonia, which is why they produced this guy. So he came up on my um, search from the scouts, and they thought he was quite good. He's also six foot four, which meets my requirements of being a tall player. Um, and yeah, yeah, I just thought I'd go for him. This is before I could see a lot of this, I just went in for him thinking, 17, he's tall, I could see the teamwork, I could see the work rate, I could see the jumping reach as well, which is linked to his height. Um, I could see his marking, and his, I could see his passing, I might have been able to see his passing. But I could see a few bits that made him look a little bit more tantalising than he actually is. So I went to sign him, thought amazing, checked where he was in my squad, and it turns out he doesn't join until summer next year. So yeah, didn't go very well. And that's about it. So that's my transfers done. I'm going to try and hold on now to January, I think. Everyone I wanted either has gone elsewhere or has completely ignored me. Stevie Chong, um, real Tishan player, released by Taha. I wanted to sign him. Wouldn't even come on trial. A lot of players who are released from some of the bigger clubs like Moria wouldn't come to me on trial. Lots of 
players don't want to talk to me at all or they just want too much. So I'm just going to leave it. Do what we can with what we've got. The border aren't expecting much other than top half. The media prediction is it. So we're going to see, let's see what we can do with that and the halfway point, then we'll reassess. So, as is tradition for me anyway, I'm going to clear the squad. I like saying with a fresh slate at the beginning of the year. We're going to go 4-4-2 because we're going to struggle, I think, to get players in for anything other than this. Um, we've got players who are away at the Atoll Championship. So the first two games of the season, which I'm going to play, so the first one's against Manue, and the second one is against Tupai. Uh, we have our players away, and we've got about 11 players out. So in the goal, we're going to have Bothwell, who is replacing Ahmed, who's with the national side. On the right-hand side, we're going to bring in Brent McCloy, because we have no option but to bring in Brent McCloy. Um, we're going to leave the left because I need to call up, I don't know, let's do it now. Let's call up the left fielder, Mark Burgess. You can stay there in the senior squad now as well. So Burgess goes in. So he's the one who's going to, he, he looks as good or slightly better than Joe Jansen, even though he's much younger. So he can go in. In the centre here, bolt in. Now oh, we're going to put in Salaberry. Bids came in for Salaberry and Bolt. Um, kept them. Salaberry, I was almost tempted to let him go, and then I realised when he's traits, he enjoys big games, so we're going to keep him for that at the very least. We're going to start Manuel, give him a chance, because he got quite a few assists last season before he got injured. Um, Richards is unfit. Oh. I don't know why my players are so unfit. Ball winning will have to be Higgins because Weaver is away. I don't seem to have anyone else to play in that position. Oh no, Weaver's not away. So Weaver can come up. Higgins. Higgins is going to go in there. That'll do the trick here. Yeah, we really are quite thin on the ground. Target man will have to be Henderson. Pressing forward's gonna have to be Wallace. A bit of a turnaround for this. And then Seth Waite's gonna be on the bench. And yeah, there's not much for the bench. Let's just call up a few. So let's get Keeper on there. Oram is he's tipped to be good, apparently, but don't know about that. Jesse Thomas. Lots of people started sniffing around Jesse Thomas. Um, so Moria, for example, we're looking at him. Let's bring on... I don't remember uh, Darren Lee being there, but Darren Lee could be there. From Nathan Wilkinson as well. That should be enough to fill, fill the bench, I think. One. Jones. Press. Thomas. Oh, Lee suspended. That's why he didn't appear. Wilkinson. It's not quite filling the bench actually, but that's that'll do for the moment. Pretty sure I called up Orem. That's going mad. There we go. That should be it now. Not quite a full bench, but it will do. So we're going to play this match and hope that our young team will see us through. They did this time last season. This is how people like Lamb um, McCloy got their shot last season. But we'll have to see. So they're going 4-4-1-1. They were kind of mid-table-ish last season with Manuel, so we finished above them. Let's see how we do against these guys. So we finished a bit above them, so we technically should be doing better than them. It's difficult to know how people have strengthened. Everyone seems to have done a bit better than us in the transfer market. Everyone else was really, really kind of active. Even if it's only one or two players, they seem to be getting in 
decent players. And I think what the teams are doing are kind of stripping the bones of the squads in the lower divisions. So all the squads are pretty full in the Premiership. Most of the squads are pretty full in the Championship, apart from one or two. And then in the kind of silver and the gold, uh, the full teams in there seem to be losing quite a few players to the rest of us. So not much going on. To be honest, I probably would take a couple of draws from the opening couple of matches whilst we get the team back. I'm out to the top of the table though with their opening match. They're, they're one of the teams who were promoted. Still getting that standard tactical message of Weaver would be better in a more familiar position, but we can't really accommodate that at the moment. Not got enough players. First real highlight and Henderson's through. I guess a shot away. Henderson's not the fastest. He really needed to swap that around and have Wallace run onto that one. Even then, he's not that fast. Manuel in. Now it goes. So we're just sticking with the 4 4 2 for the moment. Keeping it simple while the squad's finding it a little bit difficult to kind of fill. And I have tweaked it slightly from the end of last season with the full backs to try and make it a bit more defensive. It also sort of potentially has made it a little bit more boring. Richards with a free kick. Oh, good save. Now, by the time this video comes out, there's a good chance the winter update will have been done. Richards, get it out, get it out. One person up there on his own. Um, yes, it's probably it's, there's potentially a winter update around about March, so this might come out towards the end of February. Um, I'm recording it a little bit earlier than that, but the winter update might have come out, so the tactical things might have changed. Currently, you can um, the the day I'm on, you can download the kind of public beta version where you can help with the testing and so on. Um, apparently, the public beta match engines quite nice. They have strikers dropping into the positions they should be dropping in and things like that. Not happy. There we go. Fire him up. Higgins is tired and there's not much I can do about it. Bring on Jesse. But I've, yeah, I've not actually used the public beta. I've not moved on to that one because what I don't want to do is tweak my tactics for that. Then the updates come out where it's made, another change is made and then have to do it again. I'd rather stick with what I know now it keeps it consistent, and then when the proper update's out, it's out fully, then I'll um, have a go at that. And I also don't like taking part in the beta if I'm using something that's a bit weird. So I, I don't want to, it's that kind of, if you, if you put something weird in, you'll get a weird output. Crap goes in, crap goes out. It's I'm not saying this database is crap, but just it's not a normal database. So I don't necessarily know if the... Um, the the rest of the uh, updates, it's not just the match engine that will be updated in the public beta. I don't know if the rest of it will handle this kind of unique league system and the reputations and things like that. So I'm just avoiding it for the moment. Ooh, that is a clear penalty. He shoved him. I and mean, there's absolutely no need because that ball was going nowhere, but he shoved him. Ah, starting well. Oh, good save by Bothwell. And a second one. He could be a hero. I mean, he's got high eccentricity as one of his attributes. I don't really want him to be the hero of the club. Don't trust. Oh, good save again. Maybe I'm going to have to rotate him and Ahmed. Ahmed was a good youth pro uh, product as well, so I'm a little bit disappointed we've got two good keepers rather than two good outfield players from that, but I guess it's better than nothing. And clean sheets are better for points. Oh, I got two shots there. So I think clean sheets are the best we're going to manage from this one. So let's bring on Wilkinson for... Let's have a look at Wilkinson, see what he looks like, so we know who to bring him on for. And he's generally bad. Um, what's his heading? Come on, Henderson. And bring on Seth Waite for Manuel. I think anything drastic is going to change here. I think this is just 
I'm jinxing it every time as I say it probably, but I think this might just be a point, uh, a scrabbled earned point. We've got to pie next, he seemed to be winning their match. He swings it in, Salaberry, oh yes, there we go. Marvin Salaberry, big game player. Narrowly escaped being transferred. He's just on the tip of his toes when this comes in. So wait, the substitute. Tap. It goes. I mean, really poor defending around him, but that'll do. And this is completely undeserved. Anything. If you had to pick one of the two teams to be the winning team, it would be society rather than us. Good ballish from Wilkinson. Wallace, almost. We've kind of got into it in the last 10 minutes. The rest of the game's been all them, if anything. They had that penalty, obviously. Oh, some poor touches. Got a very good technical side. Hmm. It changes things a little bit. I mean, we need to be able to do this. We need to be able to like scrape a win, be able to move on. But it was undeserved. Makes me think our luck's going to run out elsewhere. Let's just run into the corner, or do that across the Wilkinson. Bad. There we go. Might as well just blow the whistle now, ref. Nothing else is going to happen. I keep forgetting who Thomas is, but Jesse Thomas. So apparently he can play as a deep line playmaker, which would be useful for one of the tactics I've got set up. Um, yeah, he's the one that Moria wanted to buy. Moria also put a bid in for, as did the Eels, for Gerard who obviously rejected, because they didn't even offer any money. Um, and that's even cheekier, not just because he scored 33 goals last season, but because the Eels, who put one of the bids in for him, are going to get 750 grand when they play in the Club World Championship, even if they lose the very first game. So they could afford to pay us a little something. So I'm going to pause here, and I'm going to come back for the Tapai match. But that was a good, uh, completely undeserved uh, win. Okay, so I've moved forward to the uh, Tupai match, and there's a bit of an issue. I've kind of screwed myself over the way the international competitions have been set up. Uh, so the Atoll Championship's going on, we lost about 11 players to that. And then we just had an announcement saying we had more players called up for the... Let's see if I can find it. Um, I'll just put under-19s in, I think that's what it was. Yeah, so the Oceana Under-19 Championship, we've got another 11 players called up, but there's a lot of overlap between the players we called up to cover the issues with the players we had called up for the Atoll Championship. So our backup has now also been taken for this. And there's not a huge overlap, so it's just this game where I've got 21 players out. And then after this game, the 11 senior players will come back, the, the original 11, and these ones will carry on with their under-19 championship, where hopefully they will do well. Uh, but that's meant... Uh, let's have a look at the um, tactics. So I had to call in the dregs of the um, under-23s, so the ones I hadn't even considered as backups to, to the ones. These are backup backups. Um, I can't name a full bench because I have enough. Only had one striker, which is Henderson, left available. So because of this, I've gone to my wide target formation because it's the only one where I can fill some of the positions. I've still got people out of position as well. So Hersig is a centre back who's playing right back. That fits with the way I want to. That should be fine. And Douglas is our left winger, our backup left winger who's playing left back. East Hope is an attacking midfielder, centre and right, who's playing box-to-box. -box. 
Lee's been in and around the team. And he's more of an attacking midfielder. That's it. So there's no depth. East Hope looks like his condition is terrible. So he's probably going to die halfway through the match. Uh, but that's all we've got. It's got what we've got to work with for at least one game. But it'll be uh, an interesting trial by fire for the uh, tactic. So I'm not going to use this as a measure of whether this tactic's any good. Hmm. Okay. Could be a difficult one to go against with our tactic as well. Kind of pack the middle a bit. Yeah, I'm going to miss. We did put an offer in for a couple of players, so there's... I know I said earlier on that we're probably going to leave it, but I saw two strikers who might have been quite good. One just as a striker, and then Vidal, who's mentioned there, as a kind of wide target man. But Vidal wanted like £400 a week, which I wasn't going to pay. The other one might come through there. It's from AS Chance, the other striker, so we'll have to wait and see. Ball goes in. Goes out. So yeah, not the strongest team we've ever had. I think we're one of the teams that gets affected the most by these call-ups because the Austral Island national team at senior and um, under-23s is mainly picked from our team. And then Gerard's gone to the Tahiti national squad and is it Makasina, our new signing, has gone to the Bass Islands squad where he got his first goal, apparently. But it's not much use for us. So not much happening in the way of highlights, which I'm okay with considering this is a pretty ramshackle team. Apparently we're getting shots in there. Yeah, come some of our players are apparently out of position. Uh, yeah, obviously. Do you know that, assistant manager, thanks. I mean, reasonable goal. Almost kind of how I want team to play when doing this tactic. Well, oh, that kind of wide player coming in there. Yeah, I'm trying to see that going in. Standard finish. <laughs> Go and stop him. Othwell saves. <coughs> Yeah, nothing happening. So this is fun and sailing match. Good, good start to the uh, new season. Douglas into Lee. What's going on? Scramble. I mean, there's no, no real skill or class in this. But Henson does it. He's in his third season with us. Yeah, that's. I mean, we're lucky we got anything in on that. Not deserve that. I still don't think we'll keep this even all the way through. I think there's another goal in them at least. Yeah, Henderson doing the job. I was considering letting him go. Um, the problem with letting him go was nobody wanted him. His contract still got a little while to run. I didn't want to kind of upset things by just offering him out when no one was going to go in for him. Unlucky. I mean, it's not been good, but the reason why it's not been good is this is the sub bench partially of my under 23s rather than anything else. Map T looking nailed on for their uh, second win, potentially. So these are the. They were in a premiership to begin with, got relegated, come back up through the playoffs. It's not a bad start. Taha in the last round of games beat Bora Bora, the reigning champions, 5-0. So Taha are kind of the cup team, really. So they've won the inter Island Cup twice. And they won the Super Cup at the start of the season as well. So they've, they've got a few cups to them. Maybe it's their season. I keep seeing, like, whenever the score... Updates come up here. I keep recognizing names of players who rejected me. So Freddie was one. 
There's a player called Defritas for Morphia, I think. He scored and he came up there and he would have been really good. He was a really good defensive midfielder. So I guess the good thing about this tactic is, if I'm going to try and scrape a positive out of this, is although there's not much actually going on, that's fine because it's our under 23 reserve and backup players doing it. So even with a weakened squad, it's kind of holding them. It's there's nothing particularly dangerous going on from Tupai's side, at least for this half and a bit. So we can take those being promising. So we had actually good players. So you had Gerard up front, so there's better runs going on. If we had a better kind of midfield three, if we had full backs, we might actually end up crossing the ball forward. Crossing the ball forward, you know, well, getting the ball forward. Then it might be an okay. So we can take some positives from it, even if they suddenly get another goal. It's not like we've been dominated and the tactic's just intrinsically flawed against this this tactic anyway, against their, their deeper 4-4-2. Leroy, you've got a few yellows. Back in it goes. That was good. Good delivery. Or defending. I think his marker is the left back, so no wonder he got away from him. Says Douglas. Yes. That's because he's the wrong player in the wrong position. It's, I mean, it was good delivery in, good movement, but that's what happens when your left back is on a left back. I mean, sometimes it also happened to our left back, but too surprised. And again, I can't be too angry with them after this. Having him there is kind of confusing me because when the ball went forward then I thought he was attacking it, playing the other way around because I'm not used to him being in that part of the pitch. Oof. Oh, that was bad. I mean, that's a bad goal. Bothwell should have done better with that. But watch this one just because it's upsetting. Yeah, apologies, this video is a little bit longer. Yeah, he just flaps. Everyone flaps. Nobody came out that looking good. Yeah, apologies if it's a little bit longer. It's just partly me rambling to start the season updating you on that and also all my players going, so I'll be having to like juggle different player selections. Douglas actually headed the ball. He's a small man. Never mind. So we'll end there. Uh, thanks for persevering and watching that. When we come back, it should probably be for one of the cup matches. And we've got Taha in the first round, so we might come back for that because it's a bit of a grudge match now. And yeah, thank you for watching and see you in the next video.